With AP exams coming up next month, I wanted to take a moment to highlight some of the equations and constants that are given to you by the College Board. A lot of this should look very familiar. We see our equation for specific heat, and the College Board chooses to say mc delta t, which offends me greatly. Our equations for calculating delta s, delta h, and delta g that we used last chapter. We see Gibbs equation and we see delta G as related to the equilibrium constant. We have some variables over here that should also be familiar. Q for heat, M for mass, C for specific heat capacity, temperature, entropy, enthalpy, free energy, moles. Here you'll see that the College Board just uses a capital E instead of the epsilon for standard reduction potentials. It's just a little bit more clear to see. Then you see some physics here. I is current. It's measured in amperes. I is defined as units of charge over time. And so over here you see the equation I equals Q over T. And so Q is charge here, and you see Q as heat up here. So that's a little bit confusing. You'll never see those in the same problem, so hopefully we could keep those straight. Charge is measured in coulombs. That's the standard unit of charge. Current is measured in amps, and then time is in seconds. And there's another constant over here. You see Faraday's constant. And Faraday defined how many coulombs or how much charge you get for every mole of electrons. We see a definition of a volt, which is how much work you get per unit of charge or how many joules per unit of coulomb. And so earlier I was saying that volts are a measure of potential energy, which is not correct. It's really a measure of energy per unit of charge. How much work can you get out of a single charge? And then there's one more equation that we'll see later where we can relate free energy to electric potential. So we'll take a look at this a little bit later. So these are all equations and constants given to you on the AP exam. That said, I want to take a moment to look at something that's actually not on the AP exam. This is from a lab we would have done if we were all in class together. This comes from Flynn Scientific, and it would be finding the electric potential of voltaic cells in non-standard conditions. And you can see here that we have an equilibrium expression involved with converting a standard electric potential to a non-standard electric potential. R is the universal gas constant, T is temperature, N is the number of moles, and F is that Faraday constant that I just showed you, 9.65 times 10 to the 4 coulombs per mole. This equation is referred to as the Nernst equation, and the text expresses the Nernst equation like this. Now the 2.303 comes from them changing the log from a base of E to a base 10, so this comes from the change of base formula. On the previous page, this was an LN. In the textbook, they use log. And then the text further simplifies this. We know the value for R, and if we're running this at 25 degrees Celsius, standard temperature, then T and F are also known. So you can plug all of those into a simplified Nernst equation that looks like this. It's all the same equation, and it's the same equation we saw on the previous screen with the natural log. This one right here is probably the easiest to use. So let's take a look at a problem from the back of the book. This is problem 71. We're going to look at a lead storage battery. And the lead storage battery is going to be run at non-standard conditions. Temperature is standard, 25 degrees Celsius. But we have a concentration of 4.5 molar instead of the 1 molar that would be standard for solutions. So this is an interesting reaction that happens in a lead storage battery. If we look at our oxidation states, lead is starting out as neutral, but as a reactant I also have lead 4 oxide, so lead is a plus 4. In the product side, lead only shows up in one place, that's in lead sulfate, and we know that sulfate is minus 2, so this has got to be lead 2 sulfate. So that's telling me that the lead is oxidizing to go from 0 to plus 2, and lead is reducing to go from a plus 4 to a plus 2. Simply put, I could say lead neutral is going to lead 2 plus and giving off 2 electrons. And the lead 4 is gaining 2 electrons to go to lead 2. And that's why we see 2 of the lead 2's in the reaction. So as I said already, 
We're not under standard conditions. I have 4.5 molar sulfuric acid, which in practicality means I have 4.5 molar hydrogen ions and 4.5 molar bisulfate ion, because sulfuric acid is a strong acid. So if I'm going to use the Nernst equation, and we can use the simplified version because we're at standard temperature, we're at 25 degrees Celsius, I can say that my final electric potential is going to equal my standard electric potential minus 0 0.0592 volts all over N times log of Q. They give us the standard electric potential for this, so we don't even have to look it up on the chart. N represents the number of moles of electrons. Well, we already said that there are going to be two moles of electrons here. So the only thing we have to find out is we have to find out Q. So if we look at our balanced equation, well, the products of my balanced equation are a solid and a liquid. So they actually don't show up in my equilibrium expression. In my reactants, well, lead is a solid and lead four oxide is a solid. So the only things that appear are the hydrogen ion squared and the bisulfate ion also squared. And we've been told that those concentrations are going to be 4.5 molar. So I'm going to have 1 over 4.5 molar squared times 4.5 molar squared. So that's 1 over 4.5 to the fourth power. That equals 0 0.0024. So now I can plug this into my Nernst equation. I can say that my final electric potential is going to be my standard electric potential 2.04 volts minus 0.0592 volts all over 2 times the log of 0.0024 which equals 2.12 volts. Now I said earlier that the Nernst equation doesn't show up on the AP exam, so some of you might have already tuned this out. What I meant to say is that the equation itself doesn't show up in the AP exam, but the concept of the Nernst equation does. We said that the standard voltage in the cell is 2.04 volts. What did I do here? Well, standard voltage means that the concentrations of my solution are one molar. Well, my only solutions here are the hydrogen ion and the bisulfate ion. If you think of this as an equilibrium, what happens when you increase the concentration of our ions? Well, if I increase the concentration of my ions, that's going to shift to the equilibrium to the right. Well, shifting the equilibrium to the right is going to increase the productivity, which means that you're going to get more power out of this reaction. You're going to get more voltage. So under standard conditions, we got a voltage of 2.04 volts. But by increasing the concentration of my ions, Le Chatelier said we shift the equilibrium to the right, and I ended up getting a voltage of 2.12 volts. So the equation itself won't show up on the AP exam, but you should be familiar with what would happen when you have cells under non-standard conditions, specifically what happens if you start messing with the concentrations of your ions.